Hello and welcome to Tales from the Tavern, the official Sea of Thieves podcast. This week's going to be a little different in that we're going to split it into two and we're going to have guests later on talking about everything to do with tech art. And that relates to the videos that we released over the last uh, month or so, which range from talking about clouds to VFX to the night and day cycle and the uh, engineering hashtag Great Water. But at the moment, we have familiar faces or voices, if you're listening on the audio uh, side of things. But we'll start introducing everyone from the right here. Uh, so yeah, Joe Neat, executive producer, still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Chapman, I'm lead designer, still. Um, well, <laughs> I'm John McFarlane, I'm community video manager. Emma Bridal, social media manager. Uh, Cameron Thomas, uh, community manager. New face, yeah. <laughs> yeah. New face, oh, yeah. new voice. Oh, yeah. So uh, weren't quite right when you introduced us. Like new face, new voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I should pretend I've been here for the past two podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> You're <in> spirit. <laughs> so we, um, uh, first of all, we're going to do the same as we did last time and quickly uh, segue into community content. And I believe, Emma, you're going to start us off with some of that. Yeah. Um, interesting thing I got over the weekend. I think last podcast I mentioned that a group were going to do a music video for We Shall Sail Together. They shot it at the weekend. I've seen a, a behind the scenes photo. Uh, they've, I think they've shot it in like a fortress. Looks really, really cool. So we'll be looking forward to seeing that. Um, we saw our first piece of Recore and Sea of Thieves crossover art. Uh -huh. A week ago. It was really cool, actually. Um, had Jewel and Mac looking out at a ship. It was really cool. I hadn't seen any of that before. Mm -hmm. I think the strangest one I've seen before that was Banjo and Gears of War crossover, which don't, <laughs> don't really go together, I don't think. Bears of War. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, I'm just trying to get something, but no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that. Um, and we've had people in the studio popping up on other podcasts. You did Rare Replayed, didn't you? They did a Sea of did, Thieves. Yeah, yeah. Is it a Sea of Thieves episode or a... It was a mixture of Rare on. and Sea of Thieves, actually, yeah, so um, we talked a bit about our favourite Rare games, um, and uh, yeah, it was really good, actually, really quite fun to chat to those guys, right? So, yeah. Um, uh, and Craig appeared on the one-year anniversary of the Logcast the other weekend, so we've sort of been doing little bits here and there, and uh, as far as I know, we've passed 20,000 posts in the forums a couple of weeks ago, which yep. is impressive. Very nice. Yes. Three months. But about three months. Yeah. They've been going only but, three months. Yeah. No, I mean that, but we've appointed our first deckhands in yes. the forum, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Cool. That was super cool. You, were you doing that? Did you kind of handle that? Cameron kind of is lord things? of the forums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to see myself as lord of the forums. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Get your cape and a crown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, yeah, we recently, uh, literally like last week, uh, introduced the uh, uh, deckhands uh, because... You know, while uh, you know, I'm on the forum uh, moderating. We've got we've got Bobby and we've got Ben uh, moderating on there as well. Um, there's times when you know there might be stuff that I miss, or just due to the fact that we're in a completely different time zone to a lot of our to a lot yeah. of our uh, forum users. Um, there's you know, there's going to be times where we completely miss things, and I think. Um, the, uh, there's certain people on the forums. There were five people specifically that I thought were doing a really good job of um, just. I don't want. I don't want to say policing the forums because that sounds a bit, you know, authoritarian. <laughs> yeah. Shutting people down. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they were doing a really good job of uh, getting you know stuck in and uh, you know helping people. You know, if, if people were looking uh, for threads where they could talk about certain things or um, you know just generally just making it feel like a good place to be mm -hmm. and, and chat. And so um, I, sp I started speaking to those people. Uh, and we um, we decided to create this uh, kind of I don't I don't want to say like mo not really moderators but at the same time they're 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 almost like a, well they are they're deckhands you know yeah. they, they they help out and they um, scrub you know, up the sick yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly nice. you, know, um, <laughs> you, know, you know if there's anything um, anything unsavory going on in the forums uh, that I should know about that I you know that I haven't seen they let me know or they they're just they're just there to again just make the place feel. Um, like a nice place to be and to chat and uh you know re they're all really really nice um just and, gives uh, you more time to browse facebook and uh, yeah pretty and that much kind of stuff. for facebook. business yeah. purposes yeah. 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 any other job yeah. if work? someone came past and i was on facebook i'd panic now if they come past and i'm not on facebook yeah definitely working <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 facebook, Twitter. yeah um but yeah and yeah they're, they're doing a really good job of that so um uh yeah they're really nice really nice people cool yeah it's yeah. a good group on there i'm sort of they all they all seem to know each other. They keep tagging each other in threads. They've all got loads yeah. of in jokes. I can't keep up. I, I you know I, I can't even keep <laughs> up. I'm meant to be like a I'm meant to be a moderator, and sometimes I come back and you know this, you know they've started this new little joke. I'm like guys, um, <laughs> let me in. Yeah, let me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, 
but yeah, that it, it, it's crazy how you know it's like I said, it's only been three months, um, and it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's been, it feels like it's been longer because yeah, yeah. it's true actually. It has only been three months, isn't it? That we yeah, I know that seems so crazy. weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a community has built itself kind of on that. Yeah, it has. Yeah. It has. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where it is in the next three months or mm. six months, uh, you know. But, yeah, awesome stuff. Good team. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. cool. What about you guys? Seen anything cool on social media? Uh, social media. I did see an interesting thread on air forums, actually, which was, I think it was, what, what, for the player who has everything or the the, the pirate who has everything, which was oh, oh my god, no, that was yeah. really which weird. Was, well, <laughs> well I, I, I saw it first. I was like, "Ooh, that's a bit morbid." Mm. Which was it was um, it's kind like of carved things skulls, sculpted right? out of yeah. human bone. But if you check out the website; it's actually quite nice. I, I, I didn't go that I far. I'm afraid. Well, I wouldn't have Sorry a to everyone piece, who was. <laughs> it was there's some nice things on there, but there was, mm. there was kind of a there was a tab on there that you could click on, which was celebrities with skulls, which I imagine was celebrities posed with the skulls of the guy who carved them. But um, there's a four O. What, 404, so you can get to it. But, uh, and if you want to check buy out. anything off there, I can, I'm sure I can sign off a few expense claims. Uh, <laughs> for a few humans. Get a few guitars carved in human skulls uh, for, the, for the office. Uh, Is there some sort of like thing that you'd have to say, like a waiver you'd have to sign in order to say like you can use my skull and my bones for ornaments? Oh, or? I, I thought I, they were just synthetic. I didn't know No, they're, they're human bone. Oh, that's yeah. just put a whole new light on it. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's, 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 that, that's as far as I got in the thread. Really? No. Because oh. a lot of people are going, oh, really cool, but I'm not sure I'm cool with it being an actual person. Oh, that's, uh, bit, yeah. that's ethically a bit questionable, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Yeah, you got to wonder where they come from. Where they source their skulls and I don't know, I didn't look into probably it. Probably stop speculating on that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, med- it's like dark, dark, so the way, but like medical research, decorative skull, med- yeah. medical yeah. research, yeah. 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 not sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd like to be a skull in someone's front room. That's that's, that's where I'd want to go. That's my Aspirations really? for the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that when, I, when I pass away. A tasteful hood ornament, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be an ashtray. <laughs> 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 upturned, upturned Joni score. Uh, what about yourself, Joel? Anything else? Anything? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm enjoying balancing my time between Reddit and the forums as well. Mm-hmm. So there's, it's, uh, it's because you know we see different people in the different places and stuff. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we're active in both. Um, and I've got my little badge or whatever it is. is flare, what, flare. That's what it is mm. on on Reddit. So, so. which is thank you to Class Turkey for yep, sorting that out. But it's surprisingly. Nice to have, like that, that little custom <laughs> kind of thing. Makes you special, know? doesn't it? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on air forms, that's how I found out about the deck hand. Yeah, because I just went on there and I saw the it's the hand icon, yeah, isn't it? Hand. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like what is that? Yeah. I've never exactly. seen now that before. Got something that we don't have. And yeah. it's like yeah. a deck hand. And then I followed the thread. And I thought that's really cool. I didn't know that was coming. It was yeah, yeah nice little icons next to your name. It's yeah, it was a nice little like game. Do you not have the fancy swishy badge thing? Oh yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, but really? it doesn't have a hand. No, I don't have hand. a hand. Yeah. Can I be a Can't have hand? it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting banned from Reddit. Why? But, oh, yeah, what but, are you posting? Uh, <laughs> nothing. I don't know why they keep deactivating. Well, deactivating my account, not banned, but they keep You can leave it inactive for years. Mm. Like, what are you. I don't know. Mm. Every time I go on, it doesn't let me log on. There's yeah. another John McFarlane out there, probably. Yeah, just trolling, posting. just downvoting everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we're going to move on to what's been happening in the studio. Mm. Um, so, I know people are interested out there in the community in terms of. I'm struggling to think we're at the end of September now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Most importantly, it was my birthday on Friday. On the yeah. Congratulations. That's been the. Uh, yep. That was the biggest milestone of the month. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> 27 <laughs> years young. Sorry? 27 years young. Something like that. Yeah. Same yeah. as me! <laughs> yeah. Cameron's like 23 and just, yeah. you know. 24, 24, 24, I was 20, 24, 24 now. now. He's a yeah. baby. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gone. Go on, Mike. What, what have you been up to? Yeah. You're asking me my age then. I got, <laughs> I, was like, got a bit def- <laughs> I got a bit defensive. Um, oh, so, so like we talked about it last episode, but the kind of quest work is kind of ongoing. There's some great work going on, going on, on the team. So work on treasure maps and chests and carrying chests. And we're also working on the kind of first first kind of player inventory so being able to select items from a radial menu and again sounds quite simple but the feel of getting that feeling great in your hands and the heuristics of like how responsive it is and what it feels like when items are highlighted getting that feel just right i mean that's a lot of efforts going into that at the moment 
and uh, what 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 else? What yeah, else? Well, what else? Well, it's because what we what we had for E three was kind of okay for E three. Once you had a few items in your inventory, just yeah. LB like, and RB yeah. to cycle like between three or them. Four, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, as soon as it got beyond that, it just became really unwieldy to manage stuff. Mm. Right? It did, and so so that's why the radio thing comes in. Exactly, and we're yeah. at that point now where. As part of the quest work, we're adding more items to the game to be able to, to kind of use those quests. So it's paramount now to get something feel really nice for selecting the items. And uh, in addition to that, obviously, the, the, the stuff we talked about last time was a blunderbuss and blunderbuss security. But we're kind of going in there and making sure the player's got um, better feedback for when their shots connect. So like like simple things we can do to make the feedback feel much more compelling. So we're focusing on that. But And uh, yeah, some new stuff coming soon as well. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Keep it, but, keep it. but alongside that, we also had our internal alpha playtest, or our first internal alpha playtest. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, which was really cool, and was also on Friday, the twenty third of September. Um, so I managed <laughs> to, day to plan a milestone on my birthday, <laughs> and all I wanted to do was go to the pub, but um, instead I, I had to be, be stuck around here, kind of making sure that that was all sorted, and that then playing the game that evening at home. Um, so. <clears throat> like the internal alpha playtest, and I'll give everyone a bit of context around this, is um, it's the first time we've kind of gone outside of our studio apart from E3 and Gamescom. Because um, within Xbox, we have a we kind of have this flighting program, right? That um, uh, you can go through these different kind of rings of flighting, and it's basically <coughs> people who are Xbox employees um, who have signed up for our internal flighting ring. They get to kind of help in internal early playtests of, of games that are in development, right? So we've done them for some of the other games, mm-hmm. like yep. Gears of War back in uh, quite a while ago, actually, they did, they did one. But um, uh, so for us, it was the first time we went outside of the studio and had people, you know, from all over. Um, and I think from looking at the telemetry, there was there were people from this, um, America, Canada, <coughs> France, and the UK um, that played mm-hmm. in this one. Um, uh, and yeah, so we just had a few sessions over the weekend. So Friday night, uh, Saturday night, um, US time, and then Sunday afternoon, US time. Um, and yeah, really good step for us to kind of get get into that real rhythm of running as a service. Right, yeah. um, Massive milestone, important. isn't yeah, it, yeah, really? Yeah, like, yeah. Up until now, we've had fans play at various mm-hmm. shows, but like, there's a difference between playing at a show and playing in your own living room and yeah. to yeah. kind of have people play on their Xboxes yeah. without, without us being there going, oh. yeah. it's, kind of, it's, a great, it's a great major yeah. milestone. See how it. people communicate yeah. together, how yeah. strangers play together. You know, again, limited feature set, right? But um, we, we, it's about getting into that rhythm and we learned so much within the studio. We're doing a post-mortem tomorrow around it, but we learned so much of in, the, in the last week of running towards it, um, doing loads of play tests internally in the studio. We did like five tests, I think, yeah. um, at, at scale of everyone in the few, studio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, yeah, we've learned so much about the kind of the different things that matter to us as we run towards it, right? Because I think naturally um, we don't really track some of the key metrics or at least we um, we don't have this rhythm of doing it leading up. So so like stability or performance or load times, all these kind of things are really important. Yeah. Um, but generally when we, you're trying to pull a build together, um, you just go, like you play it and you go, that feels right. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, didn't crash for me. Um, and uh, But actually... To, to get an idea of what the experience is like for everybody at scale mm. um, is a bit different to the way well, mm. I guess I've traditionally made single player games. Right? Yeah. This is, it, it's very different. So we've, we've learned a ton and some some of the, the funny things. So we um, we managed to schedule the play test uh, on Friday uh, in Redmond to coincide with Microsoft's kind of day of caring where they go and work in the community. Um, a lot of the, the Microsoft employees uh, in Redmond going and helping out, kind of um, kind of doing charitable things to just to just give back, I guess, to the to the community. Um, so a lot of people were out of the office and so couldn't take part in that play test, which was great. Um, and then yeah, we managed to schedule the one on Sunday so that it coincided directly with the um, the Seattle Seahawks NFL game, um, which was pretty special. Um, so again, trying to get compete for people's times, but I know like it's a bit dumb, right? But um, these are the kind of things that we have to learn yeah. and get on the service. When, when is the best time to do these kind of play tests? Yeah. When is the best time? Like consider your audience, understand what they're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing a a big old kind of um, post mortem tomorrow, and then take those lessons and, and take them forward to the next one and to the next one because it's really important that when when we start getting real players in that we've ironed all that stuff out. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, big big step, exciting step for us. Um, um, yeah, and so the first of the first of many, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
first time I played at home in a while last yeah. week and my husband was going, can I have a go? Can I have a go? Mm. And he had the control, but I was doing the voice because he was too shy to do the voice <laughs> chat. And he was frustrating me so much because he was just running around the ship and I was like, why aren't you doing the sails? Why aren't you pulling it? And I was like, he'd never played it before. So he was just running around looking at everything. And he's so excited. And he keeps going, when's the next one? When's the next one? <laughs> so that's really nice to see because I was sort of like, oh, well, you've seen it before, but he hadn't. He was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I always find it's, not a, it's, it's such a psychological shift when you when you play home as part of these tests where at work, even though you try and remove yourself from it and you are looking at how it plays or mm. seeing how it feels, just being in your own living room and just you are – you really do feel like you are just a player then yeah. and you do you do play it properly yeah it's, but uh, I just, it's a good it's important step yeah well it's yeah. the first time i've experienced the magic of real players in the game so you know we've always yeah, played yeah. it with us yep. and yeah. so when i when i think real players it's people i don't know right yeah. Yeah. and so you know i was just standing on um that peak is it devil's devil's, devil's ridge, ridge yeah. yeah um right at the top just got sitting there and there was just a boat standing around just firing and i was just like there are other people and i got saw them jump off and they just swam across and swam to the island and i was just like hiding in the bush um, <laughs> and my, that's, my that's, yeah that's basically yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. basically just yeah. what i want to do in mm. our game um, you do it in real life you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. but but I was Sorry. just but but that was the point. I, I I could have just done that right, and they yeah. could have just been strangers, and I could have just been hiding there with one of us and uh, <laughs> and uh, and surprised them. But it was that magic of seeing them do it and watching them yeah. experiment with all the stuff and just yeah. jumping and swimming off. And I was just kind of watching this this I don't know this scene play out. Mm. It was nothing to do with me, and was and could have just not been part of my mm. game, if you know what I mean. But um, surely you wanted to steal their ship when you saw yeah, them jump right, off. Yeah, to yeah, totally right. But um. It's just all those possibilities open up, and it's when it's real players. It's, it just something feels magic about it. it does. Because, yeah. um, you know, you're not running around testing the frame rate yeah. or finding yeah. bugs or just playing with your mates. Or yeah. It's something. It's something different. Right? Yeah. So. Even just like when I was playing last night and and playing with a couple of the guys over in, in Redmond, and then you'd see this, the other ship that we were battling against hearing that proximity voice as they go past, yeah, and so knowing true. that it's not like people from Rare or mm. other people mm -hmm. that you work with. It's like a completely different crew on their own story or on their own like adventure and they just pass by and you can hear them screaming and shouting at each other <laughs> to like get to the cannons or like raise the sails. It's yeah, there's something really cool about that, like um which is really nice. Yeah. And Cameron got to stay up all night moderating the forums. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't too bad actually. I made sure I went to uh, I went to bed quite early on uh Saturday, Saturday night. yeah, Saturday night, Rock and yeah, roll um, lifestyle. But yeah, no, it was it wasn't too bad actually. It wasn't too bad, um, and uh, we got we got some good got some good feedback on it as well, which is which was really good because um, I, I I think uh, in the run up to um, uh, to this uh, to this uh, like this internal alpha happening, uh, a lot of the um, just on my end, uh, we've been trying to work out how how we collate bugs and feedback and just generally you know because when. We've always said that uh, when you know, whenever we do, you know, when we do release, um, it's going to be quite a player-driven, you know, experience, mm -hmm. and we want, we want, you know, we want the game to uh, to to grow with our, our community. And so, I think taking on feedback, it's important for any game, obviously. But I think you know, it's, for us, it's always been or something that's really, really major. Um, and so, over the, yeah, over the past, I mean, for months, I've been working on you know, feedback. Yeah. But I think, especially over the past uh, over the past month, knowing that we have this uh, alpha coming, um, it's been really, really important. Well, it's like for, so far, we're keeping an eye on the forums and we're looking at sentiment and looking at things yeah. people are talking about or wanting the most and everything mm -hmm. else. But oh. really, now people are playing it, even though it's a small internal yeah. audience. You know, there's still players outside the studio whose opinion matters, right? Exactly. So there's a list of bugs that they've reported that we're going to go and try and recreate and figure yeah. out. And then, yeah, there's a, a bunch of consistent feedback around a few things that we're going to go and turn into yeah. actual work yeah. which we then go and reprioritize our roadmap right and yeah. like that's cool that that's the first step that we're actually exactly. going to do it we are going to listen and we are going to change priority yeah. um and it really frustrates the people kind of outside of our studio who are like just give me a roadmap and make sure it's locked <laughs> until like your next milestone and this stuff i'm like i can but it's going to change because yeah. yeah and so we're getting into that with them it's kind of it's fun right so the the, yeah. the roadmap is always it's as out of date as soon as you've made it basically because exactly. um, yeah. feedback's going to come in and change what the priority is so yeah, you you want to be reactive because i think um it, it's nice say for example even i mean at the moment on the forums um a lot of a lot of the feedback i say feedback a lot of the speculation the fans have been given um a lot of people haven't actually you know they haven't actually played the game yeah. yet they haven't had the, actually had the chance but at the same time it's still stuff that we want to see just because it's, you know it's interesting to us isn't it you know obviously we're still making the game so it's always interesting uh, just to see what people's aspirations are and yeah you know, definitely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when we when we like that's based on if people haven't played it's based on the trailers what we've said in yeah. interviews and it's just it's really interesting to see 
where players' minds go when they've yeah. just got armed with that information. Yeah. So it's e- equally as valuable. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, but even like the stuff we've seen post internal alpha, yeah. it's just been you've got a mix of new suggestions and a mix of stuff that we are going to do. And yeah. equally, yeah. that's that's as important, right? It's oh, validation sure. yeah, yeah, that yeah. we are building the game in the right way yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and some things just go move up in priority because yeah. of and you've got to trust it because it's real player feedback it's not yeah. us second guessing each other it's someone actually playing for the first time yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. awesome you want to be as like, reactive as possible I guess it's wicked so, yeah okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over and, and move over to our other guests um, who are going to like <laughs> magically um, get to fill these seats um, they're going to emerge from under this table <laughs> Just oh, like they flip over. Yeah. Just trying to think of the future. It's not my leg. Um, it's and we're, <laughs> we're going to talk all um, tech art, so stay tuned. And we're back, and Emma has somehow changed her top. It's completely inconceivable that this is filmed uh, some time later. Costume change, all the top celebrities do it. Yep. Uh, and we're back with our esteemed guests here from the tech art department. Uh, hey, hey, hang on. <laughs> 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 literally the just, tech art. Just tech art. <laughs> Valentine's from tech art. I'm, I don't associate myself with those <laughs> ruffians. <laughs> we're putting, for this podcast, you're all under the same umbrella. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so if you'd like to introduce yourself as we go around the table. Um, so I'm Ryan Stevenson, art director. I'm uh, Andy Dennison. I'm the software director. Nothing to do with the tech art team. Just, just get another one. <laughs> yeah. And Valentine. I'm Valentine Cozen. I'm the principal technical artist. Sweet. Okay, so um, obviously we've released the YouTube videos over the last month and they've all been kind of to do with the, the uh, tech art and the game. And we've had some questions around those videos, so we thought we'd put them to our... Cool. Our, uh, tech artists. I don't, yes. <laughs> I don't even understand well, that question. Well, there's, there's kind of. I mean, so we should do we cla- we should clarify like the differences. So yes. I think the videos we talked about a number of things, haven't we? Like the one I was in with Mark. Uh, Mark's from our rendering team, so that's primarily Wolverine. Pri- that's my, yeah, Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I never noticed it before, and so, now I can't. So Mark's from Mark's uh, senior programmer in the rendering team, and they're primarily programmers. Um, whilst mm. they have a huge kind of uh, slant towards visuals and rendering and performance, they're doing mainly com- computer programming, um, and they're part of they're part of the software team that that, that I I lead, um, and that differs from tech art, Valentine. But you're <laughs> slightly different. Yes, um, we kind of bridge kind of art and tech, and we are generally people who have a little bit of technical background and a little bit of artistic background. Some people were artists, some people were more technical. But ultimately, we kind of try and bridge things where the artists want to do something that the technical side hasn't done before and like we kind of try and you know match that artistic vision with technical bits and pieces or alternatively we assist the artists in using the tech that exists which the technical team have already created and sort of giving them specifications and helping them optimize and things like that yeah and and it's that that collaboration you guys sit together the the rendering programming team and tech art sit together Mm. because it is such a close combination of, of, of tech and, and, and yeah. cre- creativity. I, 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 I ideally design. would literally have the rendering team, the technical artists, and then the artists. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't think we have a barn big enough for that. Yeah. And the, so the video that I was in with the lighting, with Andrew, um, obviously that's um, with Andrew as an artist, so he's using the tools mm-hmm. and, the, and the kind of curves and things like that mm-hmm. that make our lighting system that comes from kind of either rendering or the kind of tech mm-hmm. artists. Yeah. So it sees, yeah, it's yeah. the kind of crossroads of all these different disciplines yeah. kind of come together, and yeah. So that, so we were talking together as kind of this cross-discipline group, I guess. Tech art. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess this one is kind of aimed at. It was on the, um, it was on Twitter, but I think it was aimed more at the lighting one. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you might be able to answer this, or you and Valentine together yeah. might be able to answer this, but um, I might. Oh, you may. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. I don't even understand Dead the question, so I'll let <laughs> go on John go. Um, So the Red Ape um, used the hashtag Tavern Talk on Twitter to say, will the game have good HBAO plus slash good ambient occlusion? You might actually yeah. answer this. <laughs> yeah. really um, I'm going to let you answer it. Okay. Um, <laughs> we are using uh, ambient occlusion technique, which was developed by Hemi, which yeah. I think is an internal Microsoft yeah. tech development group. Um, 
I don't actually know that much about it, except that it's fast and good looking, and we're using it. That was more on it's the a screen space. Yeah, it's a, it's a screen yeah. space solution, though, right? Uh, HBO yeah. is yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's exactly just, I, I think it compares it, it, with HBO. It's a, it's a performant version. Yeah, yeah. I'm, the exact differences. <laughs> yeah, we're missing Mark. Part, part of our triangle. Here. I know. <laughs> I know that if you kind of turn it up too high and everything, you actually get kind of like a shadow around the player. And things yeah, like yeah. That. So that's why the screen makes sense. There's a balance. Yeah, but we we actually partner a lot don't we with other Microsoft teams because obviously there's other studios using um, Unreal and there's a lot of other studios internally mm. rendering because that's obviously the main the main part of what of what games need to do and so yeah we always try and tech share as much as possible and so in, in this instance some of our screen space mm. work came um, yeah it came from a, an, another team um, in within Xbox Xbox is a huge you know, mm. it's a huge team isn't it um, yeah Underneath Phil Spencer, it's not just the studios; it's all the it's the you know the, the the platform teams and all the advanced technology groups and everyone trying to push game development forward. So yeah, it's kind of cool that we can piggyback on on some of that work, right? And that's kind of like with now we're using Unreal, kind of there's a lot more sharing between kind of different groups where before it was all kind of individual engines, so everything had to be bespoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bearing in mind people who are listening may not like me understand the question, can we just explain what the question meant? Because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, honest. ambient occlusion. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of the shadow. <laughs> Imagine he's doing I'm to... talking to a child face. <laughs> I'm trying to look around. So yeah. best way of explaining this. <laughs> um, it's when two objects are together and you create kind of shadow in between them. So it's okay. rather than kind of the it's lack of light between okay. areas in yeah, a very untechy kind I mean, of way. Yeah. In an arty I mean, way. When, you, you kind of like here, we can't really demonstrate it because we have quite strongly directed mm. shadow sources. So um, if you have like a very large light source like the sky, you don't have separate shadows. You just have this very diffuse shadowing which will start to appear under an object when it's next to something mm. else. And so with that, we can't use shadow maps, which are kind of quite well-defined shadows. We just use ambient occlusion, which kind of takes this very fuzzy, diffuse sample of everything around on the screen and gives you this very soft shadow. It makes it look like things are sitting next to each other. Mm. Okay. So it's not the cast shadow across an object, it's them close together. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure for people who like me. You don't can kinda understand. you can kind of um you can kind of search for it. You can search for for kind of rendering scenes with it on and with it off. Mm -hmm. And the difference is quite stark. It's a mm -hmm. it's an important mm -hmm. an important addition to a lot of games in terms of just really selling selling the scene and yeah, selling the objects are planted yeah. in the world correctly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand now. Yay. Cool. And uh, this one, I believe, is around our engineering great water. Uh, mm -hmm. It's from um, Hallower 1980 um, on the Sea of Thieves forums. He says, very cool. Does water just sit or gently lap onto the every shore, or do some beaches have waves? It, I, it's up to us as mm. to how we set it up. Um, at the moment with the islands we've, we've shown, um, we've, we've set up these calm bay areas so that it is... Um, it is it is nice and calm when you bring the ship into port or when you want to moor up alongside an island. But the, the technique is flexible. So we, we define these zones. And um, as soon as we define a calm water zone, then the water will just gradually start to calm down as it reaches that. Um, we could if we wanted to, if the island suited it, if we had a if we had a big rocky, you know, big rocky outcrop um, and we wanted it to feel more dangerous, we could just reduce or remove that calm water zone. So the technique's it's pretty flexible. And I guess, yeah, from a from a credit yeah. point of view, we'll just decide how, how we use it for you know for future islands. I yeah, guess. you can actually um, have multiple kind of calm water zones on an island. So you can say like this one area, this side's calmer and that side's yeah. kind of rougher. They're just like massive spheres you can drop in the world and define those areas. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Good like, question though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the um Obviously, we've been seeing quite a lot of the, the PC build, but it's the same water tech that goes into the, the Xbox One build, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the code base is 99% of the same. Um, mm. Obviously, we'll have um, different different uh, graphical options um, and, and, and various other tweaks that we'll let um, people do on the PC version um, because, obviously, people have a far greater range of hardware and want to exploit that in different ways. Um but other than that, we you know we have to treat the build as, as the same. We don't do, uh, we 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 don't make you know radically different changes between the different versions because that would give people a different experience and it would be very time consuming to do that. So we try and make a solution that will that will fit fit all and work the same way on all platforms. Obviously, though PC, you know we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to push the resolution, for example, um, uh, which we, we it's fixed on console. But um, yeah, s same technique that, that makes life uh, life really easy for us. Sweet and. Um 
Sweet. 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 <laughs> awesome. He's just nodding. <laughs> you understand water. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm joking. <laughs> and uh, obviously another one of our videos was, was clouds. Uh, that went down very well uh, with the community. Um, so can we chat? About I know when we we filmed the video, we chatted about how light works with clouds, um, and <laughs> yes. we never really got an opportunity to put that into the video because the video was so short. Mm. Um, so now is your uh, <laughs> opportunity to wax oh, lyrical God. about your cloud text. Talk technical. Yeah. Um, yeah, God, I don't really know how technical to go in with this, but <laughs> one of the advantages with the way that we're doing clouds because. The way that we render the clouds out is we take these three-dimensional polygonal meshes and they're completely solid. They're completely f like just there's no transparency on them, and we render them all out into like a separate, smaller kind of off-screen image. And then we do a few things to them. We blur that image based on depth and distance into the scene. And then we render that image back into the main view. Um, because it's been blurred, you kind of don't really see the fact that it's originally rendered smaller. So we can do that very cheaply. And as we're rendering it, it, it into the scene, we can do a whole lot of other things to it, like we can add a little bit of distortion, we can pick out the bits where it's been feathered off by the blur, we can choose to sort of filter some sunlight through into there. And that's where we actually apply all the coloring and stuff to it as well. And because we have the depth information, we can, rather than just giving a kind of a very uniform sort of frosted glass window look, we can actually do different things to the clouds depending on how far away they are. So you kind of get this look almost as if it's been painted by an artist. Um, and because of that approach, we can, we actually don't have to do like lighting on every pixel on the clouds. We can do lighting on every vertex um, in this kind of original pass where we render off just the original geometry. And in the vertex lighting, since you know every cloud, someone asked how many uh, vertices there are in the clouds, and I think I actually answered. I, I, I literally like, hmm, I don't know. I'll check. I went <laughs> and averaged. You know this, right? I, I averaged the number of vertices on the cloud meshes that we have, and it's like something like eight hundred and fifty-four. So they're they're very low polygon clouds. They're very, quite simple shapes. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're actually baking data into each vertex, and basically each vertex knows what the average center of occlusion is. And so you kind of just do a ray cast out and you find out where kind of the main mass of the cloud is relative to that vertex. And you also know kind of roughly what the average depth is along that kind of mass of occlusion. And so when you're then drawing the cloud, uh, you know where the player is, you know where the sun is, and you know where that vertex is. And from that vertex, you know kind of where most of the cloud is. So you can then take a very, very rough guess at like how much of the cloud this ray of light will have hit before it gets to that vertex, and how much of it will have scattered out, how much of it will have gone through. And so you can actually, it's, you know, it's a very simple, very rough approximation, but it gives you this really nice volumetric effect. So especially you can see it like when you're like, you have the sun shining through a cloud, and if you've got like a skull or a, or a pirate ship, you can actually see some of that structure being reflected through it. So yeah, that's that in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So it ultimately, it ultimately means that if you've got a big, you know, a big, thick, dense cloud, mm -hmm. not as much light passes through it. Okay. But if you have a really small, wispy, mm -hmm. thin, tiny cloud, then a lot of light will pass through. Um, okay. So and that's how we get the nice sunset. <laughs> the light passing yes. through the clouds. Yeah. But it's all dynamic. Yeah. yeah. That's the real beauty is it's not... The amazing work Valentine and the team have done is you're able to dynamically spin up and these clouds, have them fill the sky, then have them go away again. And we mm -hmm. don't have to, you know, when we can do that all dynamically, which is which is quite unique. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the challenge that Valentine referred to there was around the performance of it as well. You know, that we have a, on Xbox One, in fact, on any console, you always have a fixed a fi fixed budget, right? It's a fixed mm -hmm. amount of hardware that doesn't change. It's the same for everyone. So our challenge is always that jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. of trying to fit in, well, how many, if I, we've got this big jigsaw, which is how much time we have to render one frame. How much, how many jigsaw pieces should we allot to the clouds, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's not, we can't give Valentine many, many, you know, many, <laughs> many of these pieces. So he has to, so 
so much of the work is not just how do we get to look beautiful, it's how do you get it to run fast enough that it yeah. can fit in with our total budget. And mm -hmm. that everything has to come out of that. The characters, mm -hmm. the ship, the water, the islands, all the items in the world, the, the you know, the any UI we have. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a for me, I think the success with with work like the clouds and, yeah. and water's always been around how we've managed to get it not just not just beautiful, and a lot of games do a really mm. great job at this, but also how we manage to get it performant and working well on the console. Yeah, there's always okay. lots of conversations about how many milliseconds. <laughs> you never care as much about milliseconds than you do yeah. when talking to tech artists. Yeah, yeah, re rendering in tech art, like we look at these graphs and everything's like in nanoseconds. <laughs> you know, even more. so, can I have like a distorted perception of time after that. Yeah, and I guess like. The advantage of having a system like that that is so dynamic mm. is, from an artistic point of view, yeah. you, you're, it's very flexible. Um, yeah, um, completely. It's like the like Andrew with his curves. We've got um, access to kind of controlling the kind of way that the weather works. You also, um, well, the, the kind of these big cloud systems, and also you've you've actually created so you can um, cut uh, like pressure areas where the mm. clouds don't yeah. go as well. So you can kind of define things within the world that the, the clouds will go around and avoid effectively. So hmm. yeah, it's just an adaptable system. There's hmm. lots of numbers that you can just play with, which is always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, when we're talking about like 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 you said in the the hmm. documentary, like we often for like forget it as an art form in itself. Like um, yes, absolutely lighting. Um, so what was your approach to essentially painting with light in the game? So um, right from the start, we knew we knew we wanted it to kind of like. Um, kind of have that kind of very rare kind of magic and kind of feel kind of like a, a rare game made for the modern age and really looking at uh, the past rare games we always knew we wanted something that was kind of like quite uh, kind of filmic or stylistic so really we kind of started looking at um, right at the start was looking at um, colour scripts from like films like Disney films or kind of like DreamWorks films and the way that they approach kind of like defining the colour and splashing the colour around within the environment um, and that's where the kind of the, the LPV lighting system, which we touched on, the way it, it kind of bounces light through the environment. Without it, it kind of feels like it. It um, it feels kind of more kind of dead. It doesn't feel like the light's really kind of washing through the environment. Um, so once we had that system in place, that's where it, you kind of kind of push more light into it or push more colour into those light, uh, into those moments. You can do very kind of naturalistic kind of approach to the system that I'm um, using the same system, but it is just that kind of like pushing up the oranges or pushing up the reds within it. But again, it, it's down to the fact that all these kind of numbers are available to the, to, for um, Andrew to kind of um, play with and just move. And it is that it's kind of like this big uh, knotty uh, web where you move one and then you have to kind of adjust it another five to kind of balance it all out. But it just gives you that kind of like that level of, of kind of charm within the lighting. And that's, that's kind of the approach. It was always not about catching realism. It was about catching kind of uh, an emotion or, or kind of getting that kind of feeling across. So when people look at the horizon and say that's an amazing sunset, that's when we know we've done the job that we set out to do because that's it's if we'd gone after it being realistic, people have gone, oh, it looks so realistic rather than just having that emotional response to it. Hmm. Chasing realism like in games at the moment seems to be, it's a very hard <laughs> thing to do. Like, um, There's a forum thread about it at the moment. About realism versus mm. it, fun experience. I think if you actually look out, out there, I'm always kind of looking at what people are, are kind of achieving with, with the systems that, that we've got out there. And yeah, it's getting easier and easier to actually achieve levels of realism. And I think um, I think it's all always really good. Um, but I think it's just kind of like picking where you where you want to kind of like artistically take something. I think um, certainly for Sea of Thieves, it's all about that emotion and that experience of kind of like being with your friends in this kind of like amazing adventure. And that's where that it isn't about being realistic. It's about being emotional and kind of like fulfilling that kind of dream. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, from a technological point of view, like the push for realism that some other games and technology groups do is quite useful for us even if we're not striving for realism because once you have all of these kind of physically based aspects to it, oh, we, yeah, we can then take yes. them and we can play around with them and they just give us more tools in our kind of palette of doing non-realistic things. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's having all the tools there to achieve it and then making the artistic choices of how you use those yeah. tools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not a cop-out. No. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, and it's but as you say, it's it's kind of we we benefit from from all the great work that um, either the, either the engine teams have done or 
other other partners mm. or other other game studios. A lot of game studios are very public with uh, the techniques they use yeah. and the, uh, various conferences and things. So, yeah, um, even if a game looks very different to what you would expect in the real world, it, there's still a lot of a lot of hard work gone into to yeah. achieving that effect. In well, some cases, it can be a bit harder, right? Yeah, or even the same underlying tech is used in those two yeah. things. Yeah, it's just, which it, which yeah. in our cases, a lot, a lot of yeah. it is right. Mm. Yeah. And I was talking just earlier today actually about like looking back at some CG movies and, and the styles that they tend to go for and um and how quickly sometimes some things date like I was um, just if they chase that. realism. Yeah. I think realism That's ages, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Quite mm-hmm. quickly. Quite quickly. And it's like yeah. a, it's great obviously that we're going for this kind of timeless like look. Yeah, that was a decision from the start of, of wanting something because we we've always done that with with rare games is using the tech to kind of like create a timeless look rather than mm-hmm. realism because as you say it, it does yeah. it does date because you can achieve what you can achieve at that time and then five yeah. years um kind of later people have pushed the technology, found new ways of doing things and it just moves on. Yeah. Whereas uh, more stylized work it just it just ages better because it's defining it's defining what it is in that moment rather than trying to chase something that it can't quite do yet. Yeah. Cameron and I replayed Ghoulies the end of last year. Yeah. And I know it looked a little bit better on Xbox One, but we were saying you could have released this now and it still looks great. Yeah. Have you watched Toy Story recently? Yeah. It's un it's unbelievable. Like <laughs> That's the first CGI movie, and it, it it's hard it's hard to believe that that was version one because it's still incredible. It's like, ninety six was it? The lighting, 19? the style, the characters, the animation, mm. the yeah. script is just an absolute masterpiece. It really is. But you, but, you, but you can see with it with the kind of the human characters, mm. the way that they've kind of managed to yeah they kind of like perfect that as they moved on, and that's kind of like almost a bit of a touch towards realism, where that's that's the areas that they needed to keep. <laughs> Yeah, kind of pushing on. So I'm sure I read see. Andy doesn't have a dad because it was too expensive to do humans. So, <laughs> so they oh. cut him having a father just so they just had to do the mum and sister. So he's in yeah. it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the film's it was too turned... expensive for him to have a dad. <laughs> the film's turned dark now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such an interesting thing, though, because, I mean, I think part of why Toy Story was the first CGI film and part of why the first CGI mm. film was Toy Story is because they very carefully looked at the tech that was available to them oh, and they did things precisely those things which could be done best with that tech that's why yeah. it's not a film about humans yeah oh absolutely <laughs> then it goes to ants which is very <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 Bugs Life's still good <laughs> oh so Bugs Life it's underrated yeah. it's underrated yeah. Bugs Life I still really like it I like it, it. it's really mm-hmm. clever now we've can we, I Disney can talk about movies. I yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. yeah 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 Pick, Pixar Pixar. Not, Sorry, not Disney. Disney movies. They're doing a real life Lion King. I'm just putting that out there. I read that earlier. John Favreau. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jungle Lion, Lion King. Lion, 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 King. Lion. Lion King's amazing. Yeah. Lion King. Aladdin. A little Mermaid. Just na- good. naming, <laughs> naming <laughs> films. Little, little there. Mermaid. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's just going, oh, Has anyone yeah. seen The Good Dinosaur? Yes. No, I haven't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It has some amazing clouds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was at the talk by some of the artists, uh, Sigraf, uh, in the summer, and like they had a whole presentation about how they built up the clouds, and I was just there like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> how long do they have per frame, though? They're like, yes. Um, I think a few days. Yeah, yeah. How many have we got? (laughs) Some of the cloudscapes were like, yeah, this this shot took a week to render. Yeah, but they 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 mentioned an interesting thing there actually, which I kind of really took to heart was the reason they invested so much time and effort into their clouds is because their film is about a dinosaur, and the the dinosaur is like this great big hulking brute, Mm. like we think of them as these giant beings that walk the earth, and they wanted to make the dinosaur feel small, so. In so many shots, they use this as a um, form of artistic expression to kind of convey the scale of this whole world that the dinosaur inhabits. So you get this interesting interplay of scales where you have the little human boy and you have the huge dinosaur. Mm. And the dinosaur is like dwarfed by the enormity of this world and the mountains and the cloud formations. And it occurred to me, like, that's kind of like what we're doing. That yes, I think that's why... <laughs> Clouds and all of these and things are important to us. We yeah. have these interesting scales. Like you're a tiny person on this big ship and you go out into the big white sea and suddenly, like, you know, you realize that even your ship is actually just this tiny little boat in yeah. this much bigger Everything's world. Everything's gone very philosophical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, it's, but it's important because we, yeah. can only, we, can only, um, we only have so much time to make a mm. game. So we, can, we have to choose our battles. Right? Yeah. We can't. Yeah. Um, and 
some of the two or two of the big battles we ch- we, we we chose to, to take on were water and clouds. Yeah, and that's why because yeah. there's so many benefits for doing it. Like uh, the, 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 it's crucial that. You feel like you're on the water, and that you, you and that you feel you're exposed to the elements, and there's this, there's this, you know, huge sky above you. And yeah, yeah, you, I completely agree. Yeah, it's that time it's where you're spending all of your time. We knew right from the start. It's like fifty percent of your screen space. If you look out over the waves, it's like part of it's the sky, part of it's the waves. So that's where you spend your time. <laughs> yep. And as someone on YouTube pointed out, clouds are also water. So technically, this is just a game about water. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, uh, we'll, we will end it there. And I'd just like to remind everyone that you can watch the video if you're listening to this um, on any of our audio channels mm-hmm. or you can listen to the audio if you're watching this in video and you're like, I don't have any time. I need to go and jump in the car and, and listen to something on the way. Um, but you can expect... Uh, the, our regular video series of Inside Story and Short Haul mm-hmm. every Tuesday. Yep, new uh, video on a Tuesday. New videos land every Tuesday, yep. Um, and tune in again uh, next month for the, the podcast. And remind, uh, just to remind you that um, I nearly read it out exactly as it was on the sheet there. Um, remind everyone that uh, hashtag Tavern Talk if you want your um, questions answered on the on the next podcast. We do see them all. We do see them all. We do. And... Uh, yeah, for better or for worse. And the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I want to see the worst one. <laughs> I'd just like to thank everyone here for, for joining us today and thank you very much for watching or listening. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.